Hello. The blood bottler. Suddenly, a tremendous thumping noise came from outside the cave entrance and a voice like thunder shouted, Runt, is you there, Runt? I is hearing you javelin. Who is you javelin to, Runt? Oh, look out, cried the BFG. It's the blood bottler. He... But before he had finished speaking, the stone was rolled aside and a 50-foot giant, more than twice as tall and as wide as the BFG, came striding into the cave. He was naked, except for a dirty little piece of cloth around his bottom. Sophie was on the tabletop. The enormous, partly eaten snozcumber was lying near, near her. She ducked behind it. The creature came clumping into the cave and stood towering over the BFG. Who was you jabbling to in here just now? He boomed. I is jabbling to myself, the BFG answered. Piffle fizz, shouted the blood bottler. Bob Swallop, he boomed. You is talking to a human being. That's what I is thinking. Oh, no, no, cried the BFG. Yes, yes boomed the blood bottler. I is guessing you has snitched away a human being and brought it back to your bunghole as a pet. So now I is winkling it out and guzzling it as extra snacks before my supper. The poor BFG was very nervous. There's n no one in here, he stammered. Well, why don't you l leave me alone? The blood bottler pointed a finger as large as a tree trunk at the BFG. Runty little scum screwer, he spouted. Piffling little swish figler. Squimpy little bottle wart. Prunty little pog swizzler. I is now going to search the primroses. He grabbed the BFG by the arm. And you is going to help me do it. Us together is going to winkle out this tasteful little human bean, he shouted. Oh, the BFG. The BFG had intended to whisk Sophie off the table as soon as he got the chance and hide her behind his back. And now there was no hope of doing this. Sophie peered around the chewed off end of the enormous snozcumber, watching the two giants as they moved away down the cave. The blood bottler was a gruesome sight. His skin was reddish pink. There was black hair sprouting on his chest and arms and on his stomach. The hair on his head was long and dark and tangled. His foul face was round and squashy looking. The eyes were tiny black holes. The nose was small, but the mouth was huge. It spread right across the face, almost ear to ear, and it had lips that were like two gigantic purple frankfurters lying one on top of the other. Craggy yellow teeth stuck out between the two purple frankfurt lips and rivers of spit ran down over the chin. It was not in the least difficult to believe that this ghastly brute ate men, women and children every night. The blood bottler, still holding the BFG by the arm, was examining the rows and rows of bottles. You and your pibbling bottles, he shouted. What is you putting in them? Nothing that would interest... Nothing that would interest you, the BFG answered. You was only interested in guzzling human beans. And you is a, as dotty as a dog's woggler, said the blood bottler. Soon the blood bottler would be coming back, Sophie told herself, and he was bound to search the tabletop. But she couldn't possibly jump off the table. It was 12 feet high. She'd break her leg. The snozcumber, although it was as thick as a perambulator, was not going to hide her if the blood bottler picked it up. She examined the chewed off end. It had large seeds in the middle, each one as big as a melon. They were embedded in soft, slimy stuff. Taking care to stay out of sight, Sophie reached forward and scooped away half a dozen of these seeds. This left a hole in the middle of the snozcumber, large enough for her to crouch in, so long as she rolled herself up into a ball. She crawled into it. It was a wet and slimy hiding place, but what did that matter if it was going to save her from being eaten? The blood bottler and the BFG were coming back towards the table now. The BFG was nearly fainting with fear. Any moment, he was telling himself, Sophie would be discovered and eaten. Suddenly, the blood bottler grabbed the half-eaten snozcumber, snozcumber, snozcumber. The BFG stared at the bare table. Sophie, 
Where is you? He thought desperately. You cannot possibly be jumping off that high table. So where is you hiding, Sophie? So this is the filth, the filth thing, rot some glubbage you was eating, boomed the blood bottler, holding up the partly eaten snozcumber. You must be cockles to be guzzling such rub squash. For a moment, the blood bottler seemed to have forgotten about his search for Sophie. The BFG decided to lead him further off the track. That is the scrum diddly umptious snozcumber, he said. I is guzzling it gleefully every night and day. Is you never trying a snozcumber, blood bottler? Human beans is juicier, the blood bottler said. Oh, you was talking wrong, me tot, the BFG said, growing braver by the second. He was thinking that if only he could get the blood bottler to take one bite of the repulsive vegetable, the sheer foulness of its flavour would send him bellowing out the cave. Oh no, he can't eat that, can he? I is happy to let you sample it, the BFG went on, but please, when you see how truly glumptious it is, do not be guzzling the whole thing. Leave me a little snitchet for my supper. The blood bottler stared suspiciously with small piggy eyes at the snozcumber. Sophie, crouching inside the chewed off end, began to tremble all over. You is not switch fiddling me, is you, said the blood bottler. Never, cried the BFG. Take a bite and I am positive you'll be shouting out, oh how scrumptedly umptious this wonder veg is. The BFG could see the greedy blood bottler's mouth beginning to water more than ever at the prospect of extra food. <gasps> Vegetables is very good for you, he went on. It is not healthsome always to be eating meaty things. Just this once, the blood bottler said, I is going to taste these rotsome eats of yours, but I is warning you that if it is filthsome, I is smashing it over your sludgy little head. He picked up the snozcumber. He began raising it on its long journey to his mouth, some 50 feet up in the air. Sophie wanted to scream, don't, but that would have been an even more certain death. Crouching amongst the slimy seed, she felt herself being lifted up and up and up and up. And suddenly there was a crunch as the blood bottler bit a huge hunk off the end. Sophie saw his yellow teeth clamping together a few inches from her head. Then there was utter darkness. She was in his mouth. She caught a whiff of his evil smelling breath. It stank of bad meat. She waited for the teeth to go crunch once more. She prayed that she would just be killed quickly. Ew, roared the blood bottler. And then he spat all of the great lumps of snozcumber that were in his mouth, as well as Sophie herself, when shooting out across the cave. If Sophie had struck the stony wall of the cave, she would most certainly have been killed. Instead, she hit the soft folds of the BFG's black cloak hanging against the wall. She dropped to the ground, half stunned. She crawled under the hem of the cloak and there she crouched. You little swine bugler, roared the blood bottler. You little pig swiller. He rushed at the BFG and smashed what was left of the snozcumber over his head. Fragments of the filthy vegetables splashed all over the cave. You is, you is not loving it, the BFG asked innocently, rubbing his head. Loving it, yelled the blood bottler. That is the most disgustrous taste that is ever clutching my teeth. You must be bugles to be swallowing slutch like that. Every night you could be galloping off happy as a hamburger and gobbling juicy human beans. Eating human beans is wrong and evil, the BFG said. It is guzzly and galumptious, shouted the blood bottler, and tonight I is galloping off to Chile to swabble a few human chili beans. Is you wishing to know why I is choosing chili? I is not wishing to know anything, the BFG said, very dignified. I is choosing chili, the blood bottler said, because I is fed up with the taste of Esquimos. It is important I has plenty of cold eats in this scuddling hot weather. And the next coldest thing to an Esquimo is a chili bean. Human beans from chili is very chilly. Horrible, the BFG said. You ought to be ashamed. 
other giants is all saying they is wanting to gallop off to gallop off to England tonight to guzzle school chidders. The blood butler said, "I is very fond indeed of English school chidders. They was an, um they has a nice inky booky flavour. Perhaps I will change my mind and go to England with them." You is disgusting, the BFG said, and you was an insult to the giant peoples. Shouted the, oh sorry. And you is an insult to the giant peoples, shouted the blood bottler. You is not fit to be a giant. You is a squinky little squiddler. You is a pibbling little pit squeak. You is a cream puff nut. With that, the horrible blood bottling giant strode out of the cave. The BFG ran to the cave entrance and quickly rolled the stone back into place. Sophie! Oh, sorry. Sophie, he whispered. Sophie, where is you, Sophie? Sophie emerged from under the hem of the black cloak. I'm here, she said. The BFG picked her up and held her tenderly in the palm of his hand. Oh, I is so happy to be finding you all in one lump, he said. I was in his mouth, Sophie said. You was what? cried the BFG. Sophie told him what had happened. Oh, and there I was, telling him to eat the filth some little snozcumber. And you was all the time inside it, said the BFG cried. Not much fun, Sophie said. Oh, just look at you, you poor little chiddler, cried the BFG. You was all covered in snozcumber and giant spit. He set about cleaning her up as best he could. Oh, I is hating the, those other giants more than ever now, he said. You know what I should like? What, Sophie said. I should like to find a way of disappearing them, every single one. I'd be glad to help you, Sophie said. Let me see if I can't think up a way of doing it. <laughs>